Hello, composers, and welcome to this episode of Behind the Music, where I'm going to take a behind-the-scenes look with you at one of my recent scores. And today we're going to be looking at a score I just completed uh, called The Final Touch. Now, this was written for uh, Team True Potential, which is a fantastic animation company. They have done the Judgment animation, the old World of Warcraft one, if you remember that. And this one was super cute and really just a blast to score. So the first thing I want to do is actually just play the score in its entirety on its own so you can see what I wound up creating. And then we're going to work backwards and talk about how I actually composed it. Okay, so there is a lot to get through here, uh, and there's many elements that we could talk about. So I'm first going to just talk about the spotting session. And the spotting is when I'm looking through this animation. Sometimes you do it with a director, and you basically determine which parts you need to actually emphasize in the music. So it's the primary hit points. So let's first go through, play the animation without any of the music, and you'll notice that the animation wasn't complete when I got it, uh, but pretty darn close. This is really well done. So, establishing shot. And we ease into him. Hmm. And we have this reveal. Now, I've talked about this before, but whenever you have a zoom out or zoom in, it usually indicates some kind of significance. I like to accent that. So, the establishing shot, I wanted to basically have some sort of music just to tell us the general mood. And the mood I wanted to go for was something kind of warm and cozy. Then he's chiseling. And then at the zoom out, I wanted a reveal. Some sort of a reveal here on the character. <laughs> He's finished, or so he thinks. <laughs> then there's this mood shift when he hears the snoring and he looks over. So I wanted to have some silence or something to change that part. <laughs> now she's being a little cheeky. That's the, the adjective I would use, always finding the right adjective. So she's kind of just, you know, bored, uh, but kind of getting on his nerves. She points, you missed a spot, he looks, he goes, oh my gosh, I did. And then he's going to chisel it, and it breaks. Now, I think maybe there was a magic spell involved in here. I actually wasn't quite sure, but either way, I think the way I composed it, uh, it worked out. So, um, we have this shift here. Now, look at the shock on his face and the way he kind of like locks up when that breaks. And he goes to close his eyes, so he's going like hoping it doesn't collapse and it does. These are all important moments that we're gonna accent in the score. Now that would be sheepish. He's like, uh, my bad, oops. So we need something kind of cutesy there. She looks away, she's thinking, and then she decides to help out a little bit. Or so we think. Okay. Big fade to white, so it's obviously something that's kind of like, oh my gosh, what could it be? And remember that the gnome doesn't know yet, so the challenge with this is even though we've 
score this if we're scoring this. We'll know what it's gonna be, but we don't want to give that away to the audience. So for now, shock, surprise, awe, wonder. He looks, and it's her. So a little comedic stab there. Now here he's kind of just like, he's at it. He's at the end of his rope, he's like, come on, seriously. And so I wanted to have something that would feel a little bit like grump-ish, <laughs> grumpy. Okay, dropping the block down. Obviously a little thud there, we didn't have the sound yet, but boom. He's like, would you like to try that again? And then she's kind of exasperated, but she does it, she does it anyway, right? So initially when I had scored this sequence, I actually way overdid it because of the lightning. I was hitting the music really hard and actually so so hard that it scared me when I re-listened to it. Uh, but we, we toned that down a little bit because even though there's power on the scene, look at her expression. It's not powerful. It's bored. He lands. Now the moment of truth. He looks up. Oh, it's done. And then the spot's still there. So he's like, are you serious? And that's where it ends. I think it was also designed potentially to loop. So that was something we considered doing, but opted not to in the end. So we've covered all these spotting points. Now there's quite a few here um, because it's animation. And animation does tend to have a lot of different spotting things. So you can approach animation two ways. You can go like kind of just, I'm going to write a song and then hit a couple little points. Or you can do what's called Mickey Mousing, which is where you really accent things. And in this case, I don't normally Mickey Mouse, but... For this animation, I thought it would be the right choice because it has so many moments that need hitting and there's no dialogue. So we need to make sure that it's very clear what the intentions of each character are at any given time. So now let's talk about the composition process. So the opening, we want to be a nice establishing shot. Like I said, Christmassy, wintry, warm, cozy. So on a musical level, that's E flat major with uh, some extra colors on the top. So it's like E flat major seven, add nine to A flat. So it's actually just like a one to four, which is a really cozy, warm sound. So I want it to feel gentle and soothing. So that's where we start. And I used oboe because I thought that was kind of, again, a cozy color. <laughs> Little gap there when he thinks he's done. Okay, some tremolo to add some suspense. And then the color that we move into now is uh, a half diminished. So that there is uh, E flat, F, A flat, B, E flat. So it's F half diminished. And that creates a sense of uncertainty. Like where are we gonna resolve to next? The modulations in this piece are really important because they help drive the story. So as we modulate to each little spot, we think we're in a new, kind of um, marker in the story, for example. So this is our first one where we don't know where we're gonna go. The bassoon outlines her yawn too. Okay, couple moments there. So now we move to another half diminished chord, uh, which would be, I think it's G sharp half diminished. So we were F and then we move to G sharp. So we just moved up a minor third. It's actually a really common technique to use in uh, film scoring. And that just makes us feel like there's another level to this. Now with this chord, I orchestrated uh, a French horn, a muted French horn, which I love that color, to swell up to basically kind of get ready for that moment where he's in surprise and needs to fix something, so. Now we had kind of a blump, 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 which 
is anticipating the moment where it's going to break, but it's also creating a sense of urgency for the character. Like, I need to fix this. Uh, come on, let's go. So that's where I gave that pulse. Then we have that flute trill, obviously, representing what's going to happen. Is it going to break? Now, for that spot, we had the bassoon, which kind of feels a little cutesy. I'm treating the oboe, bassoon, those instruments as his primary instrument, and flute and some of the more um, rounded instruments like flute, clarinet, more as her instrument. So to contrast the two characters. Now, in that spot, we get that little bassoon line, which is like, oopsie daisy. And we have a little glockenspiel hit, which just kind of accents the cuteness of it. And now we're also in F sharp. So we've resolved to F sharp. So we're in a new key now. And that's kind of nice because we're about third way through. So it kind of helps uh, keep the story going. Now she contemplates. And this this scene, honestly, I kind of ripped a little bit from like Forbidden Friendship from Dragons uh, because it just feels contemplative to me. So I like that. Now for that, I wanted to have the strings kind of anticipate, so. So we're still in F sharp major. And the next part we're gonna have is probably the most interesting uh, harmony of the whole piece, so it's. I believe that's what it is. Might even be this, actually. So we're using basically F sharp with a Lydian color, but also the flat seven. So it's like Lydian and mixed Lydian. And that has kind of like a, I don't know how to explain it, just like a um, fiery energy, like an undercurrent of energy to me. It just feels like electric. That's how I hear that color. So that's what I used. Let's hear that color. Swelling. Okay, so that moves to D major. D major, or D dominant seven, which goes to C sharp. So that sort of has a cutesy thing when we do that six to five. It's like, huh? And so that's the feeling I wanted. So for this part, I wanted to have a bit of a groove because it's like he's exasperated. He's made his decision that he's just done with her. Uh, at least this is the way I interpreted it was just like, and I just thought a tango might be kind of a funny choice because they're having a dance of sorts, an intellectual dance. You know, they're friends, as I established in the beginning with that coziness, um, but they're just getting on each other's nerves. So it's like a tango. And so that just felt right for the scene. Um, I sort of knew I was going to do that as soon as I saw this part. He's like, haram. Accent when the, the block drops, and then boom. So the only two moments I really hit there were just the downbeat moments. Um, I didn't really score too much in particular for this part in terms of Mickey Mousing. Also, I should note, you notice I used... Um, flute and I think bassoon and oboe so it's it's the tango of these two characters together okay so we'll go forward okay so now we're still on our five chord so that was a D sharp to D to F major, to our uh, C sharp in total. So I've talked about this before, but pedal points are a really good way to introduce some abstract harmonies. Uh, so you can use this C sharp and you can really go wherever you want as long as the motion is supported. So I wanted the motion to rise. So, but I could have done
really just depends on the kind of color I want. But in this case, I wanted that sort of feeling. Okay, just about there now. One last little accent of the castanets there for the tango feeling. And that's our oboe, which basically uh, sends us home because it reminds us of the beginning, hopefully, if you remember the beginning, where I used oboe to establish the main character of the chiseling. I wanted to give one last nod to it right here. And then that takes us home. So the ending, you know, it actually ends on a five chord, um, but that was sort of my feeling is that the story's not quite over. It's kind of more of a cutesy ending. And so that's the way I approached it. Notice there's a lot of silence in the score and that was deliberate. I don't usually do that, but in this case, there seemed to be a lot of stopping and starting. And I kind of wanted to support that with the music actually. I felt like if there's too much music, it would almost take away. And the animation and the sound is just so good in this uh, picture that I, I I honestly wanted to kind of keep a backseat and do my scoring kind of in a more subtle, nuanced way than just right in your face. So that's going to do it. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do leave a like, subscribe for more content. It really helps me out. I'm going to include the MIDI to this entire composition to all my patron members. So if you want to support me, please do check me out on Patreon. I have that linked in the description so you can check me out there. And if you want to see the finished animation, I also recommend you do that. It's in the description as well. So thanks as always for watching. Hope to see you in the next video.